Good morning. Uh, so uh, the previous talk was great, by the way. It's hard to follow. The, coming from electrical engineering, I have to talk about technology. So here's a little idea that I think may have some uh, bigger impact in the years to come. Uh, so the technology is about providing uh, affordable blood testing that could be used everywhere in the world, we believe. And this is something that we've been working on in our lab. So what you're seeing here is a map of malaria, which is one devastating blood disease that is still, uh, still has a major, major impact. As you can see, uh, almost 10% of the population is affected by malaria today. In this day and age, I think it's quite shocking. One million people die every year because of malaria. Uh, most of them children and pregnant women. And that means several thousand children a day die because of malaria. So this is a disease where a parasite is spread by mosquitoes, basically. And uh, what that parasite does is to impede the uh, property of the red blood cell of delivering oxygen through the body. Uh, part of the problem is that <clears throat> in these geographic areas, uh, access to a clinical lab, to technology, and to trained personnel is actually missing, sometimes completely. Uh, this, having access to this will not solve the problem completely, it will not get rid of the mosquitoes. But catching a disease early will probably increase or will lower the impact of the, this devastating disease. And that's what we propose to do, and uh, our solution is technological. Probably you have heard a few years ago about the, this huge project of building a $100, $100 computer to afford education to all the kids on the planet. Uh, what I'm suggesting is that it is possible to build such a uh, gadget that will do uh, similar things for healthcare. And the way we propose to do this is by using an existing technology that actually is almost obsolete. Use something like a CD-ROM that probably nobody here is using to listen to music too much, because now we have other devices. And think about it, if we could do a blood testing just by pricking our finger and dropping a blood, drop of blood onto a CD-ROM and inserting it into something like a CD drive and let the computer do the diagnosis, that probably will save a lot of lives. That probably will allow uh, sooner testing and uh, probably will lower the impact of this disease. Malaria is one prominent example, but there are many others. So, I'm going to tell you in the next few slides that this is actually not just a fairy tale. We've been demonstrating the principle in the lab. And in order to uh, tell you how, roughly how it works, I'm going to back up and tell you a few things about the red blood cell. So the red blood cell is the most, the red blood cells are the most numerous cells in the blood. They are the basic unit of oxygen transport. And they have two main properties. One is their particular shape. They're shaped like donuts. Probably all of you know this. They look like that. And second property is that they have to be very deformable. They have to squeeze through capillaries such as those in our brains that have diameters smaller than actually the, cells, uh, the cell size. So they have to be very deformable. So what our technology will be doing is to quantify these two properties. Now, what are the scales involved? Well, we all know they look kind of like a donut, but to get an idea of the size, to make up a diameter of a hair, you have to stack about 50 red blood cells. Okay, so they're very tiny, two microns thick cells. They have to be, keep this particular donut shape and they have to be very flexible. Well, this is what a doctor is looking at in the clinic. They take a droplet of blood, and they treat it with some staining. That means they color the cells such that they could easily see their structures. So you see there are some cells that look very normal. You see the dimple, their donut shape. You see some that are speculated at the top of the picture, some of them. And you see some that have these rings in the middle. These are the malaria parasites. So this is about the shape. Shape tells the doctor the wellness of the cell. The second property, as I mentioned, is deformability. This is a spectacular image. It's somewhat low, low resolution, but it's spectacular to me 
because it shows you the amount of deformation that cell has to go through. That cell, pointed by the arrow, used to be a donut. But now it has to squeeze through this narrow channel to make it through. This slice is actually a slice through the spleen, through a normal spleen. So our body devised a very, very interesting system to make sure that the red blood cells are kept optimally deformable. How do we do that? Well, the cells are forced to squeeze through the spleen once in a while and to, to kind of endure this kind of deformation. If they're not deformable enough, they get stuck and they get destroyed by these garbage collectors, the macrophages in our blood. So the spleen is a mechanical test for the red blood cells and therefore we have at all times only deformable cells and therefore the cells only are kept in circulation for three to four months, something like that. So here's our idea. <clears throat> we have various microscopes in my lab, up to a couple of hundred thousand dollars each, but we're thinking how can we make something that we, everybody can use? And we literally took a droplet of blood and put it on a CD-ROM. And this is what you're looking at here. The information about the size of the cell and the shape of the cell is in the bending of these tracks that go through the cells. These are all red blood cells here. It happens that the CD-ROM has very precise tracks, pretty much like an old record, except that now they have optical properties. So the bending of these lines gives us information about the volume of the cell and the shape of the cell, pretty much like same way these waves of the lake can tell you some information about, I don't know how, uh, some objects in the pond or something like that. So this is what we can get with this type of imaging. We can get a panel of morphological shapes, panel of structures that the cells can go through, and each of these structures can be an indication of a certain disorder. If you see a speculated cell, you may reflect some kind of something is wrong with your liver. They have various shapes, uh, various shapes have various names and the doctors all those, uh, know all those nomenclature. Even more interestingly, we are able to actually look at this jittering in the red blood cell. This is a perpetual motion that each and every red blood cell in our body goes through just because we're at finite temperature. Just because the thermal noise is enough to excite this motion in the red blood cells. These are very, very tiny motions. But if we use these motions as an indication of deformability, pretty much the way you strum the strings of your guitar uh, and you listen to it, you are able to kind of understand how deformable the cell is. So you've seen the donut-shaped cell moving the most, and you've got to speculate itself. The amplitudes are going down. It moves less and less up to a spherical cell where it doesn't move at all. So we did this a preliminary uh, study on malaria a couple of years ago, and it's, a, it's the most direct result that immediately connects these motions to the stiffness of the cell and with the presence of the parasite. So we're very excited about these results, but we need to work, of course, a little bit more to make it affordable to everybody. So this is how it's going to look. On a CD-ROM, you can fit billions and billions of cells. You use the tracks in the CD-ROM, you make a device that will look like a CD-ROM drive, and it will cost $50 probably. Thank you very much.